before we get into the scripture, um, and I'll tell you when to bring up the slide there, uh, I want, I've, I've a, this is a pop quiz, all right? You thought you were done with this because you're not in school anymore, but you were wrong. We're just going to embarrass everybody here today. Uh, pop quiz, what is the theme Bible verse for Christianity? What, and you know it's a trick question because it's me asking, right? So I'll give you a hint with that. Okay. What, someone tell me the theme verse for Christianity. Is it in Matthew? Okay. I'm hearing, I'm hearing John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. It was a mix of translations. Because that's what's in my brain. Um, what if that isn't though? I mean, did anyone disagree? Think there's a different theme verse for Christianity? I mean, that's the only one that's made the World Series so far. Do they still have the guy holding up the sign? John 3.16, yeah. I had a Bible teacher in college that said, well, Ephesians 1.10, Well, you know a preacher's always going to come up with some off the wall verse, right? <laughs> I'm so glad Larry is here. This Sunday he is on call in case we have a baby. He was preaching today and he just decided to visit with us regardless. So thank you for being here, Larry. And if we have an issue in the middle of the service, I guess we'll tag out like wrestlers and... Uh, and and, uh, and and he'll probably preach on whatever he was going to preach on instead of finish what I was preaching on. But uh, anyways, okay, so that's a pretty good Any, Anyone else? Theme verse of Christianity. Theme, okay, how about instead of the theme verse for Christianity, I told you it was a trick question, right? How about a theme, a, a theme verse for Christianity? John 14, 16, I am, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man may come into the Father except through me. All right? See, I kept the unto. I told you I grew up on King James. I told you. Uh, Larry's got one. Was the Great Commission. What I've the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18, 20. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, see, that's what's good about King James. And lo, I am with you always. See, that's why... That's why God does not necessarily protect you in airplanes, because He said, Lo, I am with you. I am with you all. Dad jokes are in these days, right? Bad, bad jokes and dad jokes, yeah. All right. Lo, I am with you always. So we drive to mission trips. That's what we do. A theme verse for Christianity. Is that word lo on the internet a lot of times? I don't even know where you're going with that, Jerry. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not even sure I want to know. A theme verse for Christianity. That's right. Romans 10, 9, 9 through 10 or 9 through 11, however you divide it up. Uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the mouth, uh, for with the heart, you believe unto Him and with the mouth confession is made and see that we're playing stump the preacher. I said I was going to embarrass you, but, but we're playing stump the preacher. Romans 10.13 oh, They all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it right. Alright, Linda. As I have, that's John somewhere, isn't it? That's, that sounds like John. Can't it be all of them? Well, what if it is all of them? All the ones we've listed or all the ones in the Bible? Well, all the ones we've listed. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know she was going to be super spiritual. Well, all the ones in the Bible, you know. <laughs> Those are my favorites. Oh, really? Which ones do you have memorized? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And that is my question to you. Now, if you were standing up here, I quoted as many as I could. 
uh, once you got me started going off. Um, and, and, and of course, everyone's going to assume, well, pff, you're the preacher. Of course, you got to know all that. We don't got to know all that. Well, guess what I'm about to tell you? You got to know all that. You got to know all that. Not because I said so, but let me tell you, man. Let me just... We live in a war zone. We live in a war zone. And the Bible says there's a suit of armor. Jerry walked in this morning and asked if I had my armor on. I wasn't even going to talk about armor. But in Ephesians 6, Paul lists several pieces of armor. Breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. The only offensive weapon is what? The sword of the Spirit. And there's an explanatory note, which is? The sword of the Spirit, which is? The Word of God. So, you live in a war zone, and this is a Second Amendment part of the country, right? Amen. I don't like to get political unless I am feeling political. This is a Second Amendment. So, so we have the right to bear arms. I think Larry the Cable Guy had his sleeves cut off, and that's what he said it was, was the right for bear arms. But... but <laughs> that's right so there might be some people out there that say well we need to come up with an armistice that's what's going to no 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 no. you need to arm yourself that's what's going to keep you safe everybody else needs to arm themselves too and that's going to keep them safe and so you live in a war zone where's your sword do you know how to use it now the reason I bring that up is uh, because I've been reading a book on what is called discipleship so you're saved so Jesus saved you. So Jesus lives in you. Now what? Well, just about every church, big and small, is falling down on something called discipleship. And, and, and one of the reasons I'm uneasy about it myself is because I don't want to convince you people that you need to do anything to earn your salvation. Well, you've got to memorize Bible verses. You've got to read your Bible every day. You've got to pray every day. You've got to, and you've got to quit cussing. You really got to quit cussing. You know, you know, and all of this stuff. I don't, I don't want to harp on anything like that for fear that you will get the wrong impression that somehow being good will get you into heaven. Being good will not get you into heaven. Jesus pays for your sin on the cross, if you accept Him, if you believe in Him, there's even some theologians don't want me to tell you that because that's still you doing something. But you don't do any of it. God does it all. Humble yourself before God. Cry out for His help. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can help you. So cry out to God for your salvation. But you're saved. Now what? Is it a list of rules? No. No. But the Christian life is different than the non-Christian life. And to make a long story short, because this is not what my sermon is actually about, um, you need to arm yourself with verses. That's one thing. This book I'm reading lists like 35 things I should be training all y'all to do. And I can't, I can't do it. We've got 43 people here today. Because I'm, I'm counting now so that whenever you haven't been to church in a while, instead of me acting clueless, at, like I don't care about you, I'm good. Hey, is everything okay? You haven't been to church in two months. I'm actually keeping track of that now because I'm the kind of idiot that doesn't even notice most of the time by myself. My wife comes to me and says, I'm worried about someone so they haven't been there. And I go, they haven't? So we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Because I'm up here talking to God. Not necessarily all y'all when I'm... I mean, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. I'm... I'm excited to have the Word of God pour through me. But um, anyways, we've got 43 people in here. I can't teach you how to live your life every day. What, what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm supposed to be teaching my leaders how to do it. And they're supposed to have some of you that they're working on teaching you, you know, how to read your Bible every day, how to stay true to God, how to turn down the world and the devil and all that stuff. And so, so this is something we need to be working on. One of those things is a daily devotion. You need to talk to God every day. If you, do, if you don't talk to your spouse every day, obviously that's going to cause problems, right? And, and, and if you don't, you know, if your grandma lives with you and you don't talk with, to her every day, oh my goodness. And, and, and guess who loves you more than your spouse or your grandma? Oh, absolutely. None of them's hung on a cross for you. And they probably have to think about it. I mean, let's be honest, you know. But, 
But, you know. What about missions? So, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's going to help me along here. Not only should you read your Bible, you should pray, but you shouldn't just pray for yourself and you shouldn't just pray for all the problems that you have. You need to think of others and you need to think of the message of the world, the, the message of Jesus going around the world, down the street and around the world. So pull up that slide, Cheryl. It's called Prayer Calendar. And um, we are Southern Baptists, and that does not mean that we have a hierarchy. That does not mean that we have a, uh, uh, a pope somewhere that tells us what to do. We are in charge of our own church, but we partner with other churches of like faith and practice to send in order to do things we can't do on our own. One of those is have a missionary board and send missionaries around the world. How many foreign missionaries does our international mission board support? Linda's half right. We used to be able to say 5,000. Now we can say about 3,800. 3,800 missionaries around the world and a similar number just in North America trying to reach this post-Christian world of America and Canada. And how on earth... And we want you to pray for every single one of them by name. How on earth are you going to do that? Well, we've come up with a system. We pray for them on their birthday. So you have a list of names here for February 16th. This is a screen capture from my phone. Normally, I turn it on its side so that you can see, you know, it doesn't look so funny. It prints a little bit bigger. But the, today, the list was longer than usual. So it only all fit on there in one screen capture if I had my phone uh, upwise. And, uh, and so for February 16th, and I'm just going to go ahead and read the names. Today, who has a birthday? Today, who we're uh, praying for is in Alaska, we have Tammy Hoke. And uh, in Arizona, we have William Swanson. Arkansas, we have John Page. In Louisiana, working, we have Larry Johnson and Randall Osborne. Uh, in Maine, we have Lawrence Ekman. In North Carolina, Lance Murphy. In Ohio, we have Jordan Gibson. In Texas, Clinton Cochran. And uh, in Washington, we have Jared Burwell. Manitoba, Brad Williams. Working with the American peoples, that's uh, Native Americans both here and in Canada, uh, that would be uh, David Boiter. Working with the Central Asian peoples, we just get their initials, O-N, because there are security concerns where they are working. We cannot publish, we cannot publish their name, uh, first and last name, and, they, and Central Asian peoples could be a lot of places, right? We got any Vietnam vets? I know Joe was there uh, on, a, on a boat. And, uh, and, and uh, so um, we won't even tell you specifically what country they're working in. With the East Asian people, peoples, we have the initials of HC and AP. With the European peoples, some of Eastern Europe, they have security concerns. And so there is SM and RR. With the South Asian peoples, we have CC, BF, and JP. Southeast Asian peoples, uh, KB, that, that would actually be Vietnam there. I don't know what I was thinking earlier. KB, JS, MS. With the sub-Saharan African peoples, we have Whitney Jones and Greg Sharp. And, of course, we're always praying for our chaplains, volunteers, state convention missionaries, and retired missionaries. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for our folks serving. Father, we thank You for all that You have given us. We thank You for Your love and Your kindness. And I just pray that Your hand would be upon these missionaries. We pray that You would strengthen them bodily because many times it is strenuous uh, to live in some of these places. And also, the stresses of ministry take a toll on our bodies. And sometimes they are no longer able to serve if they have to come home for surgeries or medical care. And I just pray that Your hand would be upon them bodily so that they would be able to continue to serve and have the energy to do so. Lord, we pray for their children that are growing up there and the educational opportunities and the things that are going on and sometimes the separation when they have to come back to the States to have college or, or whatever the case may be. And, and they have decided to go and be in these places uh, away from grandparents and away from family support. Lord, we lift them up to You. Lord, we lift up their ministries and pray that uh, Your hand will be on them. They would not be discouraged, but that they would see fruit and, and that they would remain faithful. Lord, we ask all of these things in Your name. Amen. 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 And so, not only do you need to read your Bible at some point every day and, and think about God things and talk to God about things, but uh, James says... Be doers of the Word, not hearers only. Don't just pray about your own issues. Pray for the message of God to go around the world. And this can be found, uh, Cheryl, I believe the slide above that one, uh, it, uh, it tells you 
Uh, it's very simple. WMU.com. That's the Women's Missionary Union. They publish this and just prayer calendar forward slash prayer calendar. WMU.com forward slash prayer calendar. And uh, so, anyways, it's in and it's in published in the open window, which is a publication we get. So if you're a little more old-fashioned, you know Jerry's got you hooked up, and that's fine. That's great. That's wonderful.